All right, Cubase hot tip for you. Something that I find myself not using enough, but it's something that you really should be aware of. And that's a way that you can edit with this sort of a mode called shuffle mode. Really, it's just snap, setting the snap to shuffle. It's not called shuffle mode, but I'm gonna call it shuffle mode here because what it's kind of emulating is the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro 10 or FCPX. And some of you might be saying, isn't that that thing that everybody made fun of Final Cut for when it first came out, including Conan O'Brien? Yeah, I'm dead serious. They actually made a sketch about how bad the magnetic timeline was in Final Cut Pro when it was first released, like 12 years ago or whatever it was. And it's because it introduced a different way of editing video. And I'm a Final Cut Pro user, and I actually love the magnetic timeline. And I'll show you what how it works in Final Cut in a second. You know, there's actually a way you can do that in Cubase as well. And for the most part, I don't find myself needing to use this shuffle mode in Cubase. And most of you will probably say, yeah, I, I can't immediately see a use for that. But the truth is Cubase has so many different tricks up its sleeve. It's got to be the most feature-packed program I've ever used, and I've used a lot of them. And part of what makes Cubase so great is there's so many different ways of working. So I'm gonna show you this tip, and I'll show you how it works, I'll show you a couple of different uses for it, and as long as you keep that in the back of your mind, at some point in your career, you might find yourself going, okay, you know what, I think that, that little shuffle mode secret Jeff showed me would be very useful here. So I'm gonna show you how it works, it's really cool, trust me, you'll wanna check this one out, and maybe keep this in your little bag of tricks. So first let's look at what happens in Final Cut when you're editing on this magnetic timeline. Because the way it works in Final Cut is you've got your edits, you know, this is my last video that I just made, and I'm going through it making my edits. If I have a section that I wanna move around, like this little clip right here, if we have it set to envelope, then it means it's gonna play through this cycle once, and that's it. So maybe I wanna take this little chunk right here, this, this whole entire little sequence, and move it over in front of, and you notice how when it's this part, all I have to do is select this in the timeline, drag it over, and watch what happens. Everything moves over, and now this chunk is at that point in time. So it behaves differently than a regular nonlinear editor where you would make space or have different tracks or whatever. And in Final Cut Pro, it's a really weird way of working. And I gotta say, I did not like it at first, but now I'm so used to it. Every time I look at something like jumping over to Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, I'm like, does it have a magnetic timeline? Because I actually love working with it. So I'll just make a couple instrument tracks here so I can show you in a musical context how this works. And then we're gonna talk a little bit more about sound design or just record uh, spoken word, stuff that's not maybe to a click track. So even if you're not a sound designer or, or doing a lot of spoken word stuff, you still want to check that out. So hang on one sec. So now I've got three instrument tracks here in Cubase, and I want to show you what happens when you turn on this shuffle mode, calling it shuffle mode. And right now you can see my grid up at the top. The snap type is set to grid. So that means everything I move around, as long as this button is turned on, it's going to snap to my grid and my grid is set to a bar. And I always tell people this is the way it works in Cubase. It, you can almost think of these two fields right here as being connected. So when your snap is on and you're set to something like a grid, the grid is gonna be set up right here. If we go to other types of snap like events, this no longer is connected and it's just gonna to snap to specific events. So the end of an event, the start of an event, you see how it's snapping to those two points. Let's assume you have a bit of a handle on that. And if you don't, go watch some of my Cubase Basic videos from like 100 years ago, because they're actually going over all of this kind of stuff. Very useful. So if I set this to shuffle, which I have not shown off, what's gonna happen now, as long as snap is turned on, when I drag or just click on it and move, it's not letting me move it anywhere except for the start of the last event. It's like snapping to that last thing. You also see that it can snap to the beginning of something if there's something on the other side of it. So with this one here, it's only letting me snap to the end of this event or the beginning of this event. So bunk, there we go, and bunk, there we go. All right, if you think about it, there are situations where you just want something to butt up to something else. And with the grid on, normally this, this the grid would work way better for this because you're just snapping to the grid. But what if you have some events that are not starting exactly at a bar. Well, this is kind of like that snap to events in a way, but sometimes snap to events can get a little bit more 
of a mess because what if you have a whole bunch of events that start at slightly different times all around somewhere where you're trying to move? So let's say you had a bunch of events that all kind of started, you know, roughly at this same spot. Now, if you have snap to events on and you're quickly moving something, it could snap to any one of these starts or ends of these files. So if you have shuffle mode turned on, watch what happens now. It's only going to move to the start and end of those points. So hopefully you're starting to see the way shuffle mode works. So far, it's looking a little different than Final Cut Pro. We'll get, we'll get to why it's similar in a second. Here's another really interesting thing about this shuffle mode. Watch what happens if I select all of these events and try moving them over to the left here. They all get sucked in. So I've used shuffle mode initially just for that one purpose and really useful for when you're working with audio edits of something. You could have a thousand different edits. So let's say in one project I was recording somebody's voice and I recorded all this voiceover stuff on one track and went through, they made all sorts of mistakes, cut out all the mistakes. We're going to do this in a second. Cut out all the mistakes, left with all these bits of audio that I want, but it's like two and a half hours long, all with all these gaps in it. I select all of those events, except for the very first one, slide it over, shook, and now it's all perfectly tightened up next to each other. Really powerful stuff. Okay, let's just talk about how this could work, say, if you were doing music and you wanted to see how this shuffle mode could, could benefit you. So watch this. Now with shuffle mode on, this is where it becomes really similar to Final Cut Pro. If you're trying to rearrange a song, this is one way you could do this really quickly. On a track by track basis, if I just grab this blue one and watch what happens with shuffle mode turned on and I move it over and place it right here, it's going to move this yellow event over and then it's going to move the blue one over. Boom. There it is, right? It's the same with this purple. I slide it over to the orange. It's going to push everything else to the right. If I just get rid of this, the orange one, delete it, it moves everything over. So you're starting to see how this shuffle mode works in terms of moving things around. Could be very useful. It's one of those weird modes where it's like, I have to remember that it's going to be useful to me in this situation, and then figure out a way to very quickly change to shuffle mode. Well, of course, if you want to do that, we go up to Edit, and we go to Key Commands, and this is something I've never done, but probably should have a long time ago, is turn on Shuffle. I wish they called it something else because it's too, it sounds too similar to like uh, swing or shuffle, you know? So snap type shuffle, there it is. So let's do this. Let's put snap type shuffle. Okay, so I'm going to make a weird key command for this one. I'm going to call this command shift two because I don't have anything assigned to that. So command shift two is now shuffle uh, snap. And then I'm going to set grid to command shift one and assign that. So now, I can switch really quickly between grid and shuffle mode. So there you go. You can set up your own key command for that, but that is something I should have done a really long time ago. So now I could just press command shift two. I'm in shuffle mode, turn it on with J or turn it off with J. Now I switch it around like that. And now I'm back and I press command shift one and I'm back to the grid. Try that out. Try putting shuffle or different edit modes. Maybe you command shift one, two, three, four, five for the different modes that you've got in the snap right up here. One more thing I should show you. Let's just duplicate these tracks. Command option shift D. There we go. That's my key command for that. And the same thing would work, you know, on a larger scale. So if you had a whole song and you wanted to try moving everything over, oh, that's with the grid. Command shift two, put it to shuffle mode, and now everything slides over. So you can see how you could really quickly try different arrangements of a song. Let me show you another interesting thing. When you're in shuffle mode and you draw a new chunk, it automatic, automatically gets pushed over to the left. We also have shuffle mode in MIDI editing. Okay, well, this, this is interesting. And look at that. Command Shift 1 and 2 works in the editor as well. That's, that's pretty sweet, actually. So let's, let's quantize this. Let's, let's put this right at the beginning. And we'll draw a couple notes in. We'll turn on shuffle mode, command shift two, and drag this note over. And you can see that it's shuffling to the start point of the last note. So all I have to do is grab it and move it closer or further. There it is. You can see it's now snapping to the, the left one. And then and you can see that little green, you can see that little green line which shows you which side it's gonna snap to. And I gotta admit something, this is the first time I've ever tried it with MIDI. So, 
Pretty cool. Okay. Um, what else with MIDI? Okay, what happens if I take this note and put it in between these two? Look at that. It moves the other one over. Okay. This is getting really interesting. This is the kind of stuff you have to hold on to and go, okay, I'm going to find a workflow for this. It's, it's going to be useful somewhere. I'm going to make it useful. This is the kind of thing that just makes me go, okay, how can I optimize my workflow and save, you know, three or four minutes every day? Imagine if you put those all together, what you could do with it. Learn the trombone or something like that. Okay, whatever. All right, so shuffle mode on. Let's just resize this one. Oh, interesting. When you resize a note, it pushes everything over to uh, the right, however far you move it. So if I move this one little chunk, these are going to move as well. Learning stuff together with Jeff. That's what I should call this video. Okay, so already finding some interesting uses for MIDI. Let's, let me just show you that other crazy tip that, we, that I showed you before. So if you have a whole bunch of random unconnected notes, let's just grab one. And what I'm predicting is going to happen is if I move it over to the left, they're all going to... And there they go. Okay, cool stuff. All right, shuffle mode, MIDI. It's a thing. All right, last thing I'm going to do is going to record some fake VO so I can show you how I edit voiceover and then use shuffle mode to bring everything together at the end of it. And pull in my trusty microphone. I love these reflection filters, by the way. They work They work extremely well. So I'm going to record some voice. I'll be back in a sec. All right, so I got some voiceover recorded. It's super dorky. So let's have a look at it and show you how I would edit something like this. So first thing I would do is, oh, did you see that? Shuffle mode, resize it, and it moves it over. I'm liking this already. And we'll get rid of this. Shuffle mode pushes it over. Okay, interesting. You got to remember it's on because it could get frustrating. Okay, so the next thing I will do is turn shuffle mode off. Let's just press J. Next thing I do in this kind of situation is remove all the space. So here's another little pro tip for you. I go up to audio, advanced, and then I go detect silence, or I have a key command, which is just shift D. I press shift D and up pops this window. I like to zoom way in on this and see where it's putting some gaps. So I've got some gaps in here. You can see this green is like showing where the threshold is. The green square, you can move it, and the red line is showing you the threshold of what's gonna close off and create silence. Really powerful feature of Cubase. This has been around forever, and I can drag this way up so that, you know, only super loud things pass the threshold and stay. Or I can drag, if I drag it too low, then I just kind of get everything. And there's no longer, it's no longer making silence for me. So I like to play with that threshold a little bit. And then you can also see, okay, I've got a minimum time open, which is audio gets through and a minimum time closed. And in this case, a thousand milliseconds is probably longer than this gap is right here. So if I want silence right there, I need to re reduce that time. So we're going to put it to like 500 milliseconds. You can see that it's now got a tiny gap there. Let's go 350 and 350. It really depends on what your, your audio is, work, what you're working with. So in this case, you know, do I want gaps in between every single phrase that I was saying? Well, maybe. I could get it a little bit lower if I want. So let's go 300 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds. And then you can also see there's a start time. So I've got a start time right here, which is this pre-roll, and then a post-roll after it goes below the threshold. So I usually like to keep the post-roll uh, pretty long, but let's make this pre-roll pre -roll a lot shorter. And if I do that, I know that it's going to maybe cut off the breaths that I'm saying that I'm doing right before a phrase. No problem. We're going to apply a fade there. And let's make the fade, let's make it 100 milliseconds. And then it's going to strip the silence and pull out all the silence. And if you have a whole bunch of events selected, just make sure you check off process all events. And uh, I'm just going to press process. It's never going to be an exact science, but you get it pretty darn close. So now I can go from one chunk to another. And another key command that I have set up, I know I got to do a hot key command video for you one of these days, but another key command I've set up is T is, and the mic I'm using, play from selection. I've had these for 15 years. Right? So that's a really important key command. Just look it up, go into your edit key commands and look up play from selection. I have it assigned to T. I don't think that's a default. I've had it for so many years, I, I can't even remember anymore. But it's such a powerful key command. I can just click anything okay. and press T and that's where playback starts from. I love that. So now we've got our audio all separated. I'm going to go through this and start editing it. All right, we're recording some voice into the microphone. And the mic I've got, and so there, I'm going to just delete those. And the mic I've, 
And the mic I'm using. Perfect. That one, because I've got a fade, I'm just going to move this over. And the mic I'm using. And then we'll go back and listen to this. Let's get rid of that breath. And then. And the mic I'm using. And the mic I'm using. Get rid of that. The Audio Technica 4040. And the mic I'm using is the Audio Technica 4050. A very. And it is actually a. Huh. It's actually a 4040. All right. So we keep going through. I'm just going to finish this little edit. They're still kicking. One more, one more thing I should mention is I've had these for 15 years and they're still kicking. One more. Okay, let's get rid of that little bit right there. Slide this over. Still kicking. One more. Get rid of that. T. One more thing I should mention. Is I've got some really nice studio headphones. And did you know I should mention is I've got some really nice studio headphones. And did you know that you can. All right. So I've gone through. I've, re I've removed all of the the false starts and bad takes. And let me tell you, when I'm editing Final Cut Pro videos for you guys for YouTube, I am removing about a thousand ums. You have no idea how many ums I actually say because I usually edit most of them out. So here's my gaps. All I have to do is select all the audio and then make sure shuffle mode is turned on, grab everything to the right of the first chunk, and just like that, everything is now synced up next to each other. And it gets even better. So watch what happens here. When you press play. On. And the mic I'm using is the Audio Technica 4040. A very nice mic. If I want a little bit of less of less space there, I just resize this and shunk everything butts up right next to it. So you're really minimizing the amount of edits that you have to do. Phone that I highly recommend picking up. I've had these for. I could get rid of this little gap right here just by resizing, and then maybe select both and press X, crossfade. And picking up. I've had these for 15 years and they're still kicking. One more thing I should mention is I've got some really nice studio headphones. And did you know? And did you know that you can. Oops. There's a. Phones. And did you know? Get rid of that chunk right there. The headphones. And did you know that you can grab new cushions for pretty much any set of pro headphones off Amazon for. There we go. All right. So that's it. That's my kind of editing with shuffle mode turned on. That's looking at the MIDI editing features of this shuffle mode and hopefully just putting some more of the power of Cubase into your brain so that when you're editing your own stuff, whether it's MIDI or music or sound effects or sound design or voiceover, that you're aware of the things that can speed up your workflow. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell, and I'll see you in the next video.